Good afternoon, Holy Family. Before we begin Mass today, please silence any electronic devices. Today's readings are on page 178 in the Missal. The anointing of the sick will be offered after Mass. Please remain in the Church if you would like to be anointed. There is no confirmation class tomorrow. Please come to the mission. Join us for our parish mission for three nights, tomorrow, Monday, and Tuesday. See the bulletin or flock note for more information. Next weekend, March 9th and 10th, we will be collecting fresh or store-bought eggs. Please bring a dozen eggs to donate. Eggs will be shared between St. Vincent de Paul and St. Mary's Food Pantry. The Holy Family Women's Guild is accepting donations to fill Easter bags for our homeless teens at Adrian High School until, now until March 17th. Please see the bulletin for more information. Now let us call to mind that we are in the presence of God. Lord, we ask you for the grace to celebrate this liturgy well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Holy Family, we gather here on this third Sunday of Advent in a marvelous way. First, in a special way, we want to welcome the RCIA, the 24 elect and catechumens and candidates who are with us today, some of whom will be participating in the first scrutiny, the very first time when we ask the Lord Jesus to purify their hearts as they prepare for the celebration of baptism at the Easter Vigil. In addition, I want to welcome in a special way uh, my brother, Father Joe, who will be preaching the parish mission in, uh, later this weekend, as well as Sister Siomara and Adrian Dominican, who will also be preaching. It's wonderful, and we can all continue to be present and to work together. And now let's begin this Mass by taking a moment and knowing that Jesus wants to give us the water of life. 
Let's take a moment, call to mind our sins, and ask pardon and forgiveness so that we may drink freely of it. Together we pray the confidior found on the inside of your worship aid. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring all of us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that these chosen ones, the catechumen elect, may come worthily and wisely to the confession of your praise, so that in accordance with that first dignity which they lost by original sin, they may be fashioned anew through your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Sisters and brothers, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Shall we go? Oh Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of lasting life. Lord, to whom shall we go? Lord, to whom shall we go? in the desert saving cup promised from above you are the one 
who sustains us in God's love. Lord, to whom shall we go? Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern to drink from himself with his children and his flocks? Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Sir, give me this water so I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Go. Call your husband and come back. I don't have a husband. You are right in saying I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped in this mountain, but you people say that the place of worship is Jerusalem. Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. I know the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. I am the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman. But still no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to Jesus. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in Jesus because of the word of the woman. The good news of the, of the gospel. gospel. Yes. Thanks be to God. For millennia, wells have provided water for communities, travelers, and animals a sign of 
prosperity and abundance in the biblical narrative. Wells have also proven to be significant meeting grounds, giving relief and emotionally and spiritually thirsty people. In Genesis, for example, the angel of God discovered Hagar, Sarai's a runaway slave, by a well in the desert. While ordering Hagar to return back to her mistress, God simultaneously promised to multiply her descendants. Hagar recognizes that God has not abandoned her, but singled her out for blessing. Trusting this merciful promise, she calls God, the living one who sees me, the one who understands and meets her. Today, we hear about another encounter, a sacred and profound encounter by the well between the Samaritan women and Jesus. This encounter echoes famous biblical stories of encounters between a man and a woman by the well. For example, Abraham's servant seeking a bride for Isaac encounters Rebecca. Jacob meets Rebecca, his future wife, as well as Moses meets Sephora, his future wife as well. What I think makes this gospel so powerful, just like the images from the Old Testament, here we are in the New Testament where Christ encounters the Samaritan woman. And when I step back and I think about this encounter, it's a counter of transformation, of really opening her heart up to Christ who is right in front of her. I'm a teacher. I teach some classes at a high school in Toledo. And I just took my students to this cloistered monastery. So it's these um, sisters who never leave the monastery. And they were able to speak to one. They said to her, what's the hardest thing about living here? And she said, oh my gosh, I can tell you a story. I was walking through the halls one day and I heard the Lord say to me, look at your hands. She looked down at her hands and they were fists. And she thought, what am I holding on to? And so slowly, with grace, with the work of Christ, each finger began to open until finally she could receive the love of God. The same thing is happening in this gospel today. The same thing is happening in our hearts. We're no longer fists, but open hands. We're going to take this theme and and continue it through our Lenten mission. We will gather Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday night at 7 because this community can come together. We all come with kinds of different assumptions about what Lenten missions are about, but we hear the real truth, this encounter with Christ. And that's our hope of what we will have during our mission these following days. The Samaritan women is a key for our days together. She's also a key in the story of salvation. Even though she remains unnamed, she models both the ideal disciple and the ideal apostle. She lets herself to be led by the personal encounter with Jesus into a faith in him, the Messiah, the I am. Filled with the joy of the one who received the living water, she immediately turns to share her new faith with others. This woman is a model for catechumens and all of us on this lengthy journey. So the mission starts tomorrow night, Sunday night. We'll gather here at 7 p.m. My brother even built us a well. Huh? (laughs) So we'll come to the well, just like the Samaritan woman did. And we pause during this Lenten journey as we show up to encounter Christ. The theme for tomorrow, for Sunday night, is that statement from Jesus in the beginning of the gospel, which is, give me a drink. 
Give me a drink. Monday night, we'll gather again at 7 for the Samaritan woman's response, which is, how can you, how can you ask me for a drink? We see that this encounter with Christ reaches our inmost being, opens our hands to receive the love outpoured. And then finally, Tuesday night, we'll gather once again at 7 for our final night of the mission. And there we will have the response from Christ, which is this. Our God now is giving us living water. And we become that living water. We are transformed. That gift of the living water, we become that gift. Each night we'll finish by 8.30, so 7 to 8.30. It's going to be a bilingual experience, so we'll gather here first for some opening uh, uh, songs and, and worship. Then we will split. I'll stay in here and present a mission in English, and Sister Ciamaro will gather with uh, the Hispanics for, for a Spanish mission. And then we'll come back in here to finish. And I really ask you, it's so important to come, not only for your Latin journey, but most importantly, because our mother is coming. <laughs> and I really want to show her uh, a great mission. I don't want to go to Easter and for her to say, oh, Joe, just a few people showed up for you guys. So, so important because our mom is coming. And all it happened because, it's, because a Samaritan woman came came to a well and had a profound encounter with Jesus. May this holy family parish community become the well where we all can come together to have an encounter with the living one who sees, the Messiah, the I am, who quenches our thirst in surprising ways. Today, we celebrate our first scrutiny with our elect. I ask those desiring baptism to please come forward with your godparents and sponsors as I call your name. Rick Cox. Jenna Duckett. Jared Duckett. April Trejo. Viviana Trejo. Valentino Trejo. Mercedes Trejo. Tori Regalado. Olivia Garcia. Ruben Barro. Alana Carey. Ariel Hernandez. Tracy Ann Steiner. And Collins Capruto.
Holy Family Parish, these 14 women and men have gathered desiring baptism, the font of living water from Christ. Please bow your head in silence as together we pray for these elect. Elect of God, please continue bowing your heads and pray. Brothers and sisters, let us pray for these elect whom the church has confidently chosen. May they successfully complete their long preparation and that the Paschal Feast find Christ in his sacraments. When we are hurt by rejection, deliver us, O oh God, give us living water. Give us living from a culture that demeans women, deliver us, O oh God, give us living water. Give us living water. From a culture that degrades the poor, deliver us, O oh God, give us living water. Give us living water. When we fail to trust your presence, Deliver us, O oh God, give us living water. Give us living water. When we are lost in our selfishness, deliver us, O oh God, give us living water. Give us living water. When we fail to see our goodness, Deliver us, O oh God, give us living water. Give us living water. From the slavery of addictions, deliver us, O oh God, give us living water. Give us living water. When we're ruled by fear and hatred, deliver us, O oh God, give us living water. Give us living water. From the despair of our own sins, deliver us, O oh God, give us living water. Give us living water. God of power, you sent your Son to be our Savior. Grant that these catechumens, who like the woman of Samaria thirst for living water, may turn to the Lord as they hear his word and acknowledge the sins and weaknesses that weigh them down. Protect them from vain reliance on self and defend them from the power of Satan. Free them from the spirit of deceit so that admitting the wrong they have done, they may attain purity of heart and advance on the way of salvation. Sponsors, please place your hands on the shoulders of the elect. Holy Family, let us raise our hands in prayer over the elect. Señor Jesús, que por admirable del seno de tu misericordia, tocaste el corazón a una mujer pecadora, y le enseñaste a adorar al Padre en espíritu y verdad. Libra ahora con tu poder a esos elegidos de los dañinos engaños de Satanás, pues se acercan al manatial del agua viva. Convierte sus corazones con la fuerza del Espíritu Santo, para que con la fe sincera que actúa por la caridad, conozcan a tu Padre. Lord Jesus, you are the fountain for which they thirst. You are the master whom they seek. In your presence, they do not dare to claim to be without sin, for you alone are the Holy One of God. And yet they open their hearts now to you in faith. They confess their faults, and they lay bare their hidden wounds. In your love, free them from their infirmities, heal their sickness, quench their thirst, and give them everlasting peace. For by the power of your name in which we now call upon in faith, stand by them and heal them. Rule over that spirit of evil, conquered by your rising from the dead. 
and show your elect the way of salvation in the Holy Spirit, so that they may come to worship the Father in truth, for you live and reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, we await the day when you will join us at the table of the Lord. At this time, we ask you to remain with us, to return to your seats, and we continue to pray together until that day a month from now, when we will all share in communion. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. 
For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our own good of all of God's holy church. May your merciful grace prepare your servants, O Lord, for the worthy celebration of these mysteries and lead them to it by a devout way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. For it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks, as with all the angels we praise your mighty deeds, as together we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Mm -hmm. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Earl, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember also, Lord, your servants whom, who are to present these chosen ones at the font of rebirth. Remember also your servant, Anita, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, informed by his teaching, together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of that peace. Is my goal. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins 
sins of the world have burned. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, we offer the following prayer. I, Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Except for the Lord. 
to invite forward all those taking the Eucharist to the sick or to the homebound this weekend. By the reception of this Eucharist, O Lord, may all the sick and suffering in our community who hunger and thirst for you be fed, be aware of your love for them and our affection towards them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Give help, O Lord, we pray, by the grace of your redemption, and be pleased to protect and prepare those you are to initiate through the sacraments of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. I would like to give again a special thank you to my brother, Father Joe, and Sister Siomata for being with us and starting this parish mission. I didn't know our mom was coming, so that's news to me today. <laughs> In addition, next weekend is our egg drive. You know, the price of eggs has gone up greatly. Our food pantry and St. Vincent de Paul Society feed many people here in Adrian. So if possible, please bring a dozen eggs to church next weekend. There will be places at the, both entrances to receive them. Then we'll use them, we'll split them between the food pantry and the St. Vincent de Paul Society so that the poor here in our community can have fresh eggs. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Praise